Lastly, we can edit the contact form to define the autoresponder that is sent to a customer. To do this, navigate to the page and select the contact form section. Within the pop-up, navigate down to the bottom to the email subject section. This is the subject that will appear when the email is sent through to you regarding the inquiry. This will be set up to, uh, by our team to correspond to the page that the contact form is existing on. The next section, Auto Respond Text, is the text that will then be sent to the customer's email address. In this example, a simple message informing the customer that we have received their inquiry and that we will get back, back in contact with them shortly. You may want to add to this text by including some contact information for them to contact you directly. Once you've edit, edited this information, simply click Save and hit update. We're now going to focus on how you edit the contact forms that may exist within your website pages. These would have been set up by our team in discussion with you based on the information that you want to gather from customers navigating your site. Two examples of how this may look is you may have a lead generation page, in this example titled Claim a Free Assessment, where customers are pushed towards this page in order to fill in certain information that you want to gather for them before they enter your coaching services. You can edit the information that you want to collect within your management area and also edit where these emails will be sent and the autoresponders that customers will receive, both on your site and to their email address. The second form that may exist within your site may be within one of your coaching pages. In this example, the Junior Academy page. We can see that we have an inbuilt form relating to claiming a free taster class. Let's go ahead and navigate the form that exists on the Claim a Free Assessment page. To do this, navigate across to your Pages tab and find the page. Scroll down the screen to find the relevant section. Visible here as Contact Form. We can see here that to edit the information within the contact form, we have to open up the element itself. To do this, navigate to the top left corner and click on Edit Element. We can see here three tabs, Form, Colours, Screen Options. You will only ever be editing within the Form tab. The first section allows us to define which email address we want to receive these contact form inquiries to. We can add a single email address or add multiple email addresses separated by a comma. Upon a customer filling in this form, this is where the inquiries will be sent to. The next section, the form title, relates to the section that we can see above the first field. To edit this section, simply enter the text and you will see the changes in the live element preview on the right. As we scroll down the page, we can now begin to edit and add the contact form elements. On the left hand side, we can see a list of the contact form elements that exist within the form currently. We can delete these sections by clicking on the X And we can move any of the elements by clicking on the arrow, clicking and drag. This will reorder the elements in your form. To add an element, simply navigate down to the bottom of the section and click Add. The element will automatically be added to the bottom. Firstly, define the element type by clicking on the element itself which will open up the edit form element pop-up. We now need to produce a label for what this new element form relates to.
we now need to define the form element type. We can choose from a drop down of text input, a text area which relates to a larger section of text that we want our customer to fill, select element. This will give the customer a selection of options to choose from. For example, option one, option two, option three. We can also select a checkbox and a date picker, where the customer can choose a date in a calendar view. Once you've selected the form element, simply click Save and view this in the preview on the right hand side. We can see that we've selected the date picker, but we now need to move the element to the correct position within our form. Let's move it above the checkboxes. Finally, we need to choose a submit button label and hit save. To see the change on our live website page, we now need to click update. Refresh the page to see your change. We can now see that the date picker has been added at question 4. Once we've edited our form, we now need to define the autoresponder that is sent to customers once they fill in your inquiry form. This is good practice and a better customer experience as your customer will know that you've received their inquiry. You can also define the length of time it will take you to come back to them on their inquiry. To do this, navigate across to the relevant page and open up the contact form area. We now need to navigate down to the section below the submit button label, where we can define what happens once the form gets sent. We recommend that you always send that you display a short message on the same page. This will mean when an inquiry is sent, a message will appear saying that the message has been sent correctly and the form will disappear. Alternatively, you can redirect the user to another page of your website. However, we only recommend that you do this if you have a separate landing page indicating that the form has been received successfully. We now need to define that what we want to appear on the page once the customer submits the inquiry. At the moment, this is set to receive an alert on the page which says, we have received your request, a member of our team will be in contact with you shortly. Once you've made the edits, go ahead and click save and update the page. We recommend that you go back to your live website page, refresh and complete the form as a test. Once you completed the form, click Send Inquiry. Once the form has been submitted correctly, you will see that the contact form disappears and we can now see that we have our message appearing within the page. We're now going to take a look at how we can edit the autoresponder that is sent to customers 
when they fill in the inquiry form on the Contact Us page. We've already looked at how we edit the contact forms that may be existing within different pages. However, on your website, you will have a Contact Us page. Customers, if they have any further queries, are able to fill in the contact form visible here. This will have been set up by our team to include the correct drop-downs. Within your content management area, you are able to edit the autoresponder that is sent to customers. To do this, navigate across to your content management area, navigate down to the contact tab and click contact forms. Click on the contact us option visible on the page and you will see four tabs along the top, form, mail, messages, additional settings. To edit the autoresponder, simply navigate across to the mail settings and navigate down to section 2. This will have been set up by our team, but you can make some edits to this area. The edits you can make should only be made within the message body section. Within the message body section, you can define the content that you want to be sent to customers when they have submitted an inquiry. In this example, we've added some text stating, thank you for your inquiry, it's been received and we'll contact you as soon as possible. All of the information in the signature section will have been completed by our team. Once you've made the necessary changes to this area, simply click save. We recommend that when you navigate back to your live website page, you complete a test inquiry by including your email address so that you can receive the autoresponder and check that it is as you wish.